Did Cassie really go public with her lawsuit against Diddy just for money? Because she dropped her case in 2.2 seconds as soon as she was paid out. Allegedly. Because new update on the Cassie and Diddy's lawsuit case has shown that the case has been settled off court between Cassie and Diddy. And y'all, just in case you're wondering what is going on, Hey royalties, kings and queens, welcome back to the channel, it's your girl royalty, back with another celebrity relationship gist. To my returning subscribers, you guys are the re-MVP, and if you're new, you are so welcome. Please consider being a part of us by hitting the subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell to not miss another video. Thank you. So, singer and mother Cassie recently drops major bombshell and shocking details revealing lawsuits against Didi. Didi's dark secret exposed Cassie breaks silence in decade long time nightmare from romance to rage, y'all. In a wild twist, Cassie dropped a bombshell lawsuit on Didi, claiming he put her through a decade of emotional manipulation. It was a SA case, y'all, and even a RAPE. And guys, a lot of people came into the chat, a lot of people in defense of Didi, in support of Cassie. And you guys, just for this case to just start jerking up and people rallying around to support Cassie. And the next thing, they are settling out of court. Really? We are going to get into all of the details, okay? Those who entered the chat room, those who got kicked out of the chat room, and where they are right now, settling. So, in a wild twist, Cassie dropped a bombshell lawsuit on Didi, claiming he put her through a decade of emotional manipulation, abuse, and even RAPE. The lawsuit spills all the tea on their toxic relationship, leaving a lot of people hungry for the details in their jaw-dropping legal saga. Apparently, this lawsuit has been going on, but it became public just this week, Thursday the 16th of November. It became public and it has been making the rounds, y'all, on the blogs, on the internet. It's been making major headlines, but today, apparently, <laughs> this case has been settled. But before we get into the settlement, let's hear more about the case and everyone who came into this group chat. So buckle up because this story is intense. Y'all ready for this wild ride? Okay, according to multiple media outlets, Casey has filed a lawsuit against Didi, accusing him of RAPE, physical abuse, and emotional manipulation. The lawsuit dating back to 2007 when their relationship started, alleges disturbing incidents including coerced ass and violence and broken promises. Casey paints a picture of a controlling relationship, claiming Didi monitored her every move, forbidding her from seeing friends or family, public humiliation, name calling and infidelity were also part of the alleged abuse. The lawsuit even details specific instances of violence like a broken nose in 2015 and a choking incident in 2018. Cassie is sad she finally ended the relationship in 2019 when she met her current husband, Alex Fine. However, she claimed Diddy tried to sabotage her new relationship, resorting to threats, private investigators, and property theft. Now, Cassie is seeking unspecified damages, I think $30 million, y'all. For the physical, emotional, and financial harm she says Didi cost her. She's also requesting a restraining order to keep him away. Y'all, this is messy. So, what's Didi's side of the story? Of course, so at first, Didi is refusing Cassie's claim of SA and RAPE during their relationship, says she's been attempting to blackmail him for $30 million for a long time coming. Didi's legal team is slamming the allegations. His attorney said Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Ms. Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaged book about their relationship which was unequivocally rejected as blatted blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Ms. Cassie Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies aiming to tarnish Mr. Como's reputation and seeking a payday. Hmm. 
you guys the public and as well as some celeb were not buying into shandidi's legal team statement so just like you would expect once this became public people started bringing out receipts receipts started to drop like azealia banks the singer azealia banks she said something on her ig story she said this is true one time diddy beat her up so bad he sent her on a three-week vacation to hawaii just so no one would see or question how her face got like that she went on to add another violent hip-hop homosexual this is what mental illness look like for all of you i'm chair psychologist y'all a lot of more people started to get into this group chat as diddy's ex-girlfriend Gina Hyde also got into the group chat so more receipts start to drop and an old interview resurfaced an interview with diddy's former girlfriend Gina Hyde claiming he was abusive resurfaces amid the sa and rape lawsuit from cassie ventura in that interview, Gina Haig stated that Didi stomped on her stomach repeatedly. You guys, hear it for yourself. He had like pushed me and I fell to the ground and, and then he got, he like stood over me. So I was like laying on my back and he stood over me, punching me like this. Like he avoided my face, but he like started punching me like on the side of my head and I was just like covering my face. After he got done doing that, he like stomped on my stomach like really hard. Like child, you know, there is no smoke without fire. When this thing start going up, definitely there is some truth in all of this. Not all this past videos resurfaced. This got a lot of people talking here and a lot of tweets, old tweets were resurfacing. And someone from the public opinion put out a tweet that says, but when AIB Shaw was saying something happened to Kim Potter, nobody wanted to listen. Then he got sick suddenly. Y'all should have listened. They rekindled before she passed. You know, she's talking about after the passing of Kim Potter's Diddy Farmer's girlfriend and mother of his kids. You remember when he was making the rounds and the headlines that AIB Shore indirectly alleges that Kim Potter may have been murdered. Okay. Shore claimed that in the time leading up to Potter's death, she was running from someone or something and that he had told her, recounted in a now deleted Instagram caption to call the FBI. Only later did he add instead that she was running a marathon. A lot of people from AIB's Instagram post at the time believed he was indirectly alleging that it was Sean Diddy who probably took Kim Potter out. But then again, AIB Shore recently put out a post reflecting on his recovery from a coma with a very interesting caption. In that post, he said, Grand Rising Beloved, I don't know where to start or if you're truly ready to hear from me yet. You've witnessed only a small portion. Of my journey my faith has been shaken but never shook and my humble spirit of discernment has taught me the definition of what sacrifice and silence truly means just know that we forgive you but never to forget including all who assisted along the way all praise is due to Allah you guys what could he be talking about sacrifice and silence like those words he chose to use the precise words including all who assisted along the way y'all is giving you know secret message secret code and considering how quincy aib shore and kim potter's son together who is also the adopted son of didi has somehow not been so much around didi lately he's mostly seen around his siblings yo is making a lot of people to really give didi the side eye you know because a lot of people have their own theory wondering how much aib shore knows how much did kim potter tell him before she suddenly passed on and that since she started to make those posts all of a sudden he became very critical ill so which is what he's talking AIB about in his journey in his recent post was on the aib show alleged indirect accusation of Didi. this is what a lot of people had to say this person says ma'am i wonder how quincy can even still be around Didi, calling him his pops and as when that man has evidently hammed both of his real parents ain't enough fame money in the world bro but some people had this to say they said you haven't noticed quincy hasn't been around him in years he's only around his siblings i've noticed quincy hasn't been around him much as of late and this brother says i think he playing a role they said keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer this addict says, I just wonder what kind of hold old boy got over his son too. Anuka can try and off my dad and I still smile in the videos and pics. And this user says, free Arrow Kelly Diddy on some whole next level S. 
But hold up, that's not all you guys. And so according to TMZ, Diddy is reportedly the subject of a secret NYPD investigation that allegedly involved as a sort. Sources in the law enforcement tell the outlet that there is an open and active case with the name Sean Combs. However, the case file has been locked. No word on who the criminal complaint was made by. But you guys, again, it did not take long before the NYPD denies this. So the NYPD denies having a criminal XA investigation opened against Diddy. They claim an employer lied to a reporter about the case. The full NYPD statement reads, Yesterday, a member of the NYPD Diddy's public information office erroneously told a reporter about an apparent existence of an active case file containing the name Sean Combs. There is no such investigation at present. Further, the release of such information is not consistent with the internal policies of the Office of the Deputy Commissioner Public Information. The NYPD always treats allegations of SA and RAPE extremely seriously and urges anyone who has been a victim to file a police report so that support and services can be offered to survivors and a comprehensive investigation can be conducted. Yo, that quickly went into the trash bin. <laughs> My God. Like, just when we thought, okay, we're about to get something really juicy. And maybe there could be a surviving Didi. Uh, but it looked like everything is being squashed real quick. And again, that's not all. Talking about being in a relationship with a controlling famous person. Young Jock also came into the chat room. He says Didi demanded Cassie to shave her head after seeing a white woman with the style. Whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do was what Cassie said at the time. You guys hear it directly from Young Jock. He saw this, this, this white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around. It was lit. Hope jumped up. Me and Cassie said next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. And then jumped off the bar, came over and said, Yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. I'm like, what the fuck kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, what the fuck? So when I look up now, this white woman side of her head shaved, my nigga. And the bitch look good with it. So I'm looking at Cassie, I was like, well, I, I was like, you know about to do that, right? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do. Child, this is so insane to hear him say what he said. Even him at the time looking at Cassie, like, girl, you really? You're gonna just shave your hair and say because did he say so? Like, how much more can we take? This is all insane. Guys, given the receipt that we're coming up and dropping already, the odds were not in Didi's favor until someone came into the chat room in his defense. It was the hustle and flow actress Paula J. Packer. Paula J. Packer came into the chat room, you guys, with questions for Cassie. But yeah, she got slammed out real quick by the public. So Paula J. Parker was questioning Cassie's SA allegation against Didi and now she's getting tons of backlash for doing so. The actress shared her two cents on Cassie's explosive lawsuit with a series of tweets and at one point said, I'm sorry but I don't get it. I used to be 19 and I was in the industry and I was quite capable of saying no. By 19, we're all strong enough to make choices that affect the rest of our lives. If you can't say no, you are not built for it. Take that midnight train now before you get yourself in trouble. She also says, I'm trying so hard to see the victim here, but the S slaves usually get to pick their S partners in five-star hotels. Yo. Guys, that did not end well for Paula J. Parker because folks on social media were ripping her up. Art. and people are throwing out alleged NDAs, threats and fear as potential reasons why it took Cassie so long to speak out. You guys, this is getting really interesting. I hope you still have your popcorn in your glass of wine. <laughs> well, D. Woods from Dainty Kane speaks out in support of Cassie. D. Woods got into the chat room because Paula J. Parker was probably saying something that the people did not want to hear. So D. Woods said, I haven't posted anything on the platform for a very long time, but today there is a very good reason to self-worth peace of mind and the right to speak your truth at cassie you are incredibly brave to shine light on what you endured in the dark i'm sorry you had to go through it alone i'm praying for continued strength and i offer my full support to you talking about what cassie endured in the dark you know you remember sean Combs' statement while he was receiving his award where he mentioned cassie for holding it down for him during his darkest time yeah take a look at that but y'all, I was in a dark place for a few years, you know what I'm saying? And I had to give a special thank out. Thank you. Shout out. Thank you. 
all that love. So I gotta give a special thank you to the people that was really like there for me. Yeah, and also Cassie for holding me down in the dark times. Love. <laughs> So guys, just when we were rallying up for a surviving DD lifetime show, yeah, this whole thing was wrapped up real quick, I guess by Sean Didi, because the latest breaking news and update was that Cassie Settles lawsuit against Didi, accusing him of RAPE and all sort of abuse, y'all. Miss Cassandra Ventura has settled her lawsuit against Didi. According to multiple media outlets, both parties reached an undisclosed settlement just one day after Cassie filed a lawsuit accusing Didi, whose real name is Sean Combs, of RAPE, physical and emotional abuse. And you guys, these were the statements from both Cassie Ventura and Sean Didi Combs. Cassie said via NYT, I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. Really girl? So quickly, like in 2.2 seconds? Come on y'all. You better be kidding me. And then Shandiri's statement also via NYT said, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best love. You guys, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Do you think that Shandiri comes probably dropped the bag on her and they wrapped up this whole thing real quick? Was this whole thing all about the money or she was truly coming out as a survivor? Because y'all, there are real victims out there who are still afraid, you know, to come up and mention the names of their perpetrators. And she's just going to wrap this all up real quick? Do y'all think Didi dropped the bag on her? This is crazy, y'all. Of course, folks on the street were not finding this funny. Y'all, you're not just going to wrap us all in into your story, into your mess real quick and just leave us hanging just like that. And the fact that Didi wrapped it up real quick. But anyway, this is what folks on the street had to say. This uncle says, so basically he did all that S. The worst part is instead of speaking up, Shadi took the hush money and ran with it. Another person says it was always about the money. I've been said that she's down bad and her husband not rich. So as a man, imagine living off another man's money. I could never. Real men not living off another man's money. Go to court and put him in jail if that's what you claimed he did to you. SMH. And this person says this was a shakedown. Nothing more, nothing less. We're accountable for what we allow in a relationship. You don't get to enjoy the benefit of the lavish life for decades. Then once over address the abuse part it was cool when it was beneficial but hope the money healed her since that's all it took another person says i don't know what's more disturbing the fact that he paid up so quickly or that she said to it exactly y'all and one auntie says so she just wanted some money and you guys is making it look like parker miss j parker was right all along because folks were coming for her and were bashing her left right center but Given how quickly Cassie wrapped up the case and settled off court, is given that Paula J. Parker probably knew what she was saying, but y'all, yeah, this is not looking good. Anyway, some more comments. This person says, and let me tell you why this was genius. She put everything that she would have been said in a trial in those court docs and didn't have to step foot in a courtroom to be lied on and gaslight and still got paid all while still opening the floodgates of Pandora's box for other victims to come forward. Olivia Pope couldn't have orchestrated this any better. Well, I don't know why that is straight fact, but it's given she probably has solid evidence against Didi and he knows that for sure. He's probably giving her the 30 million grand out of court because he needs to clean up his image real quick <laughs> because this is going to get real messy for him. She just say she shouldn't have brought this to the public if all it took was a payout to solve the problem. There are real trauma victims who felt empowered with her decision to stand up and speak out. This was very irresponsible on her part and one of the reasons why people don't take victims seriously in cases like this. Well, if you ask me about bringing the case to the public, probably she has been reaching out to him because at first, Didi's legal team were talking about Ventura always trying to blackmail Didi, you know, that was like behind closed doors. But she had to put it in the secret and make this move because she knows she's got real debts on him. And he knows too 
So I guess if she didn't do that, she wouldn't get her payout. But yeah, she was right. If it was all about the payout, that was really disappointing. And then this person says, I can tell by a lot of the comments, y'all didn't read the public affidavit for yourself. It actually brought me to tears. I wish her nothing but healing for what she endured. Oh, you guys, this was a lot. But what is your take on all of this? Do you really think Miss Ventura just cleaned up her mouth real quick? Because she got a bag dropped on her? Was everything really true? Did she enjoy the money while keeping short on the abuse all this while? And then coming out to speak about it because probably she and her husband are broke. And music and modeling is not doing it for her. What have you take on this you guys? Because all of this is really messy you guys let's continue this conversation in the comment section thank you so much as always for watching if you got to this point of the video do not forget to like share subscribe and turn on the post notification bell to not miss another video and until the next one remember to pray work out work smart and slay bye bye